Ladies and gents, what must you reaction this is? The F-22 will be the first to fly with new drone wingmen. Let's go Sandbox. Yes, Sandbox has been dropping a lot of uh, information and videos, informative videos, right? Like four or five minute videos. He, he has many setups of like uh, air power, which is like big videos, right? And other type of videos as well. But he does like update videos, which is like smaller four or five minute videos where he just talks about newer things. I thought it was F-35 that's gonna be the first one, like Block 4. This basically was gonna be like 6th generation type plane uh, with, uh, you know, AI wingman, right? AI wingman? Yeah, AI wingman. I think that wingman thing is what, like, you know, made it 6th generation. So now F-22 is going to be the 6th gen one? I don't know. Yeah, with the recent issues uh, the US had with Iran and things and how they had to use B-2s and things, obviously like with F-47 as well, and Trump being Trump, yeah, it's it's all gonna be ramped up now. So F twenty two, like already they were like trying to upgrade it, right? Like people told me F twenty two can't be upgraded, but apparently they are doing it. They're doing they're upgrading all of them, like F sixteens, F uh, you know like fifteens, like different version of its stealth eagle and this and that. F thirty five is gonna be block four. F twenty two is gonna be upgraded. Why not? They're making F forty seven, another one for the navy. How many ships do they, are you gonna have, man? That's insane. Like what you gonna use? Right, if you have a lot of tools for one job, which tool are you going to use? I guess the cheapest one because why is the costlier one? I don't know. So this is going to be interesting. Let's do it. It's official. America's F-22 Raptors will be the first operational fighters to fly with AI-enabled drone wingmen as a part of a much broader $11 billion upgrade that's already underway for these unparalleled stealth fighters. Now, the Raptor first entered service 20 years ago now, but it remains the most potent air superiority fighter in service for any nation two decades on, in large part thanks to its unique combination of Cold War style thrust pumping brute force and distinctly 21st century stealth and sensor fusion. Now this one-two punch of power and technology makes the F-22 an unmatched opponent in beyond visual range engagements while still having the thrust vectoring power and aerobatics required to win most close range dogfights to boot. But with production on the F-22 program cut short back in 2011, the US has only 185 total F- How much F-47 is going to be close to F-22? in that regard because what he said here like yeah i understand that like uh, f-22 is like awesome when it comes to like long range things it's a modern plane but one thing to note is like it's really awesome when it comes to like close combat as well it's not like they let go of a lot of things for the stealth like their fly-by-wire thing and you know like the way it's made yeah it's very nimble right and it's really fast if he has to like go to high speeds right as a twin engine would be so it's really good at close combat as well. But in the modern world, is F-47 going to be similar? Or is F-47 going to just like prioritize long distance things and don't care about close counters? Because it's going to assume like it's never going to be a situation where it's going to be that. To me, it feels like, okay, in the modern world, if you want to be, let's just say a human, if humans want, if a human want to be a dangerous, yeah, you have guns, like keep carry guns, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't like learn about like jujitsu, wrestling and things like that, like physical things as well. If you have guns, is there going to be a scenario where you do that? No, but like you shouldn't have holes in your arsenal type of way. So I'm, I, I th I, I'm hoping F-47 is also one of those planes, like F-22, who's like awesome and nimble, uh, whether by technology or whatever, or is it just like smaller and nimble that way? I don't know. But yeah, I hope they don't go like how China is doing with the three engine one, which is basically a big ass plane, which is like how nimble that's going to be. Who knows? 22 Raptors with only 143 of those considered combat capable and the rest used for training and R&D. Now, it was this shortage of airframes, not the aircraft's capability, that prompted the United States to begin development on a replacement for the legendary Raptor, which we now know will be Boeing's F-47. But it'll be well into the 2030s before Uncle Sam has enough of these new fighters to replace the entire Raptor fleet. And that means Uncle Sam cannot afford to let its F-22s just ease their way into retirement. Oh no, instead, 
every combat ready raptor is receiving something in the order of 75 million dollars worth of upgrades which are all meant to improve its stealth targeting electronic warfare aerobatic performance and now maybe most notable of all control over ai enabled drone wingmen designed specifically for air-to-air -air combat and just for context, that is the dollar and cents equivalent of building a brand new F-35A and just strapping it to the F-22's fuselage. So, suffice to say, it's enough for a pretty respectable boost in capability for a platform that's already considered the gold standard in air-to-air -air combat. And because a lot of the systems and capabilities being retrofitted onto the Raptor were actually developed for its F-47 replacement, well, that means these old jets will absolutely be learning some very interesting new tricks. Now, these Raptors will fly with a tablet-style control system in the cockpit the what? pilot can use to provide simple directives to... <laughs> Imagine that enemy doing all top, top gun level shit with the like top gun level tech and shit, right? Whether it's China or whatever, like obviously modern planes, but like doing it that way with the headgear and everything and i mean oh my god and just like like how somebody just like go go on a twitter rant just press buttons like oh you're doing this okay this a chinese like what the fuck is he doing oh no oh, he's controlling the plane his or her drone wingmen like fly out ahead to extend sensor reach engage targets in the air or on the ground from multiple attack vectors and a whole lot more these drone wingmen, Andrew's FQ. I think drones, as soon as like they, you know, like said, like a drone's gonna accompany the next generation plane, I just like instantly realized, like, yeah, that is like big deal than you would realize. Because if, if the plane is in the air, let's like, just have one operational plane, like the, it has one job to do, right? Okay, it does it. But it's always a target, right? But if you have drones, unmanned drones, like nobody's gonna get hurt if it gets destroyed. These drones becomes a shield, right? Let's just say something attacks it. They're gonna make it in a way stealthier, but make it in a way that certain drones are also insanely visible. So it's not about like, okay, can certain technology detect this sixth generation stealth? Maybe, but if there's something more visible around it, like it's gonna be even more harder to find something that is not visible. It's like trying to find somebody, but one's too loud and too visible, like you're gonna be distracted. So there's going to be a lot of drones, there's going to be distractions, uh, you know, just more visible. So if that kind of attack is there, like something can attack it, it takes out drones on an actual plane. Or plane acts like some kind of a mothership. So imagine six, seven drones surrounding it. Some of them are attack ones, some of them are defensive this way, right? So if like imminent threat happens <clears throat> at the last stage, the drones get destroyed, not the plane, right? So this is like, you know, insane defensive thing. Otherwise, plane is just like a one target. Now it's no longer one target. Q44 and General Atomics FQ42, both of which are already in testing, will then use onboard artificial intelligence that's also being developed aboard a bevy of AI-enabled F-16s out at Eglin Air Force Base in Florida as we speak, with these drones using that AI to complete their assigned missions. Now, exactly how many drone wingmen each F-22 could control has not been disclosed. Initially, the Why Air Force envisioned two drone wingmen for each crewed or piloted fighter, but subsequent testing has shown that both pilots and the aircraft control systems can actually manage way more than that. Lockheed Martin has even already disclosed that in their testing, they've successfully controlled as many as eight AI-enabled drones from a single F-35. Now, we already know that the upgraded Block 4 F-35 and the F-47 are both meant to fly with drone wingmen, but these fighters are both still a few years out. And just last week, the Air Force demonstrated its ability to control two XQ-58 Valkyrie drone wingmen from both an F-16C Fighting Falcon and an F-15E Strike Eagle, both mm. fourth generation fighters. And while the FQ-42 and 44 are being designed, built, and tested specifically for air-to-air -air combat, there are several other drone programs maturing toward other mission sets, like Boeing's MQ-28 Ghost Bat, Northrop Grumman's Model 437 Vanguard, and a bunch of others. 
So, suffice to say, Uncle Sam's fighters appear to be cruising toward a future where just about all of its crude fighters will become formations unto themselves. And that is a pretty big deal. Yeah, the future is drones and AI now. Like, we've known this. Yeah. <sighs> You know, like those small drones that Iran uses, uh, very small drones, right? I'm pretty sure Pakistan used those same drones against India, acquired from Iran or something. I don't remember exactly, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Iranian. So yeah, those drones, like imagine US using something like that, but like I said, it's like that of high visibility thing. So you could have like 50 swarm of drones surrounding a plane. Now, obviously these things can't fly alongside the plane. It wouldn't have enough fuel. So they would have to like design something like compartment or let's just say a missile uh, bay where it, instead of missile, it's a swarm of drones stuck there. So you sacrifice one missile, uh, you know, loadout, but there are drones there. So as a defensive, like in, instead of FLIR, you release these drones that surrounds the plane now. A lot of them high visible. So like no attack can touch the plane and these drones get destroyed. Right, like electronic wise, radar wise, you can like have this high disruptive signal. Right, that's how like, uh, you know, like uh, radar killing radiation missiles work. They're really high in output that it, you know, like fries the system. So this one is going to be high enough that it doesn't fry the system, but it's visible to the system. So when the system attacks, drones are the one who gets taken out, not the plane. That would be something like, I'm, I'm sure something like this is going to come in the future. Oh, well, that was like some, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be F-35, but no, F-22. See, I said that, like, I'm pretty sure I remember like a year or so ago when I started watching sandbox videos and military videos in general. Like, F-22 is not just going to die out. Like, people like, oh, F-22 is like, yeah, like, you can't make new one, you can't upgrade it. New plane is coming, NGAD is coming, F-35 is going to be upgraded, F-22 is just going to, I'm like, I, no way it's going to die out. I said that, and see, it's not dying out. Like, F-22 is one of the best planes in the planet. This is not like your Toyota Camry that you're just gonna go to scrapyard. This is one of the best tech on the planet. You spend insane money on it. So uh, it would be really surprising military just discards it. Of course, it's not gonna do that. All right, well, I'll see you next time.